Walked in, I'm standing at the top of the, st uh, the theater and I'm watching these people audition. I think, man, these hippies can sing and dance. I almost forgot why I was there. And uh, I was enjoying myself and I heard somebody say, Doug Rowell, is Doug Rowell here? I said, yeah, and I ran down the aisle up on stage and I handed my sheet music to the piano player and he big smile and he starts, starts to play. Bum, 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 bum. I said, ah, I feel good. And I went into this James Brown number. I thought I was the godfather of soul. And I'm down on one knee and back up. A, when I hold you, I, and I just I walk over the stage and I, I finish the like, bum, 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 wow, bum, 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 wow. I was having fun, and um, the, the, if I finished and they said, yeah, we love you, man, we're crazy about your energy, can you do something a little mellower so we get a, a feel, you know, of your, I said, no problem. I went into an acapella version of Otis Redding's Dock of the Bay, and the piano player picked it up, and we were right in the pocket, man, it's like, oh, yeah, it's like, looks like nothing gonna change, and I made myself cry, and, uh, <laughs> Finished the song, they said, great, love it, man. Just want to see you dance. <laughs> no problem. I said, play, and the guy started to play, and I started to move around. I probably initially looked like uh, the offspring of Julia Louise Dreyfus and Joe Cocker, you know. Just, <laughs> but I, I see my hair coming around. <laughs> and I'm getting little trails off it, and the, and the fringe on this vest. <laughs> In a tornado of trails, and I'm just loving it. And I, and I heard somebody say, Jesus, can he dance? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess I thought maybe I could, and I could. Uh, and so they hired me, uh, not for the LA show, which I thought I was auditioning for, they hired me for the Las Vegas show. That's what they were auditioning for. So they hired, they told me to go to Las Vegas, so I jumped on my Harley and Rode out to Las Vegas and, and uh, joined the show out there, and uh, they and and uh, it was just a, it was a real fun time. And we were there for six months, and then we left Las Vegas, and that company became the the first national tour of air, traveling around the United States and Canada. And they gave me the lead role, the obnoxious speed freak, sex crazed leader of the tribe. You know, <laughs> it's like yeah, <laughs> well it was a stretch, but I could do it. You know. And, uh, uh, so uh, people would come up on the stage, you know, and, and we did this for three and a half years around the United States and Canada. People would come up on the stage afterwards, and the audience would dance with us, and some people would go, hey man, you like pot? Here, since me and Maui Waui, Panama Red, Acapulco Gold, give us all this great dope. And somebody would say, you like acid? Here, Osley, Purple Haze, Orange Sunshine, Window Pain, hey, hey, hey. And, and, uh, <laughs> got a witness, uh, and, uh, some girl would come up, Oh my God, I love you. Take me. Okay. <laughs> Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Traveling around the country for getting paid for it. It was, it was a good job. And, uh, but I looked back at it from my newfound sobriety and I realized how I had been used. And... Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to sing and dance and make people happy, and, uh, and they made me into a drug addict and an alcoholic. I called my sponsor. I said, "Hey, uh, I found it." He said, "I was always finding stuff." He said, "What'd you find now, Doug?" I said, "Oh, my deeper underlying cause and condition." <laughs> he said, "Yeah, okay, let's hear that." And uh, I said, "Hair." He said, "Your hair?" Okay, let's cut your hair and see maybe you can stay. No, not my hair. The show hair. Remember I told you I was a big star and traveled around the country and everything? He said, oh, yeah, I forgot about the big star deal because you're a drunk now. And he uh, 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 said, uh, but yeah, I thought you were loaded when you auditioned for that show. And I said, I have told him too much. And he uh, said, yeah. He said, um. Let me tell you something, Doug. Most people, earth people, people, you know, non-alcoholics, when they go to interview for a job they really want, won't take a drug they can't identify. So, so 
what most people do. So I'm going to just go out on a limb and say, maybe you had a problem when you got that job. And I go, okay, all right. Then I don't know what my deeper underlying cause and condition is. Maybe I'll get drunk. He said, you will. What? And he said, yeah, you'll get drunk if you swallow any alcohol. So don't swallow any alcohol and call me tomorrow and go to a meeting tomorrow and read the book tomorrow. What? Read the book tomorrow. Read the whole book tomorrow? I want you to start reading that big book. If you can't read a chapter, read a page. If you can't read a page, read a paragraph, but read it every day until I tell you not to. <laughs> that was 24 years ago, you know? <laughs> he hasn't told me not to, that's what I do. You know, that's what I tell guys that I work with. You know, read a chapter, if you can't read a chapter, read a page. If you can't read a page, read a paragraph. Sometimes I'll, uh, I'll tell them specific um, things to read, or I'll tell them to call Howard, and he'll give them a page number, you know. And, and, uh, <laughs> uh, it's maybe the best advice I got since I've been here. And I've been reading that, I've probably read that book a hundred times. And I never did discover my deeper underlying cause and condition. I, I, uh, I finally settled on trauma from circumcision. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't remember it. Uh, but I know that if it happened today, I'd be a little restless, irritable, and discontented. <laughs> but you know what I think the, 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 the music, the music of Alcoholics Anonymous, good people, what the hell is that bozo talking about, about the music of AA? I think it's the, I think it's the laughter. Because we come in here, I heard Clancy say one time, I've been to a lot of 12-step programs, I've never seen anybody laugh as much as we do. And that's, that's been my experience too. I never thought about it before I heard him say it. But, uh, we come in here sick unto death and dying and feeling like we'll never laugh again. And everybody's laughing and what's so damn funny? I'm dying here. Can somebody help me? Yeah, yeah, come on in, you know. And you hear somebody laughing and you realize it's you. You know, what a miracle that is. And we take it for granted. We come in sick unto death and dying and feeling like we'll never laugh again. And we start to laugh. And we laugh ourselves weller than we were before we got sick. That's incredible. That's an incredible gift. And it's free. Free from a God that, uh, that loves alcoholics so much he gave us Alcoholics Anonymous. And there are people in this room tonight who will be handed that gift, that beautiful gift, and say, no thanks, I'd rather get loaded. That's true. There are people here tonight that will do that. If you're new tonight, um, give it a shot. Give it, a, give it an honest shot. If you stick around it a year, we'll give you a cake. <laughs> Thanks for letting me share with you.